Hey parents, Carmine here with your video review of Alien Isolation. For those who have watched both of the first two Alien movies, you know there's a huge difference between the suspense-filled horror of the first movie and its action-heavy sequel. While previous Alien games have focused almost exclusively on the shooter-oriented action, Alien Isolation is an entire experience devoted to suspense. You are put in a situation where almost everyone and everything you encounter is out to kill you, and the only thing you have to protect yourself are a few weapons with little ammunition and whatever gadgets you can craft from things you can find in the environment around you. Your nemesis, the infamous alien, is a 7 foot tall invincible monstrosity. You can hurt him, but you can never kill him. You'll hear him crawling around in the ceiling near you, and if you or anyone around you makes too much noise, he'll pop out of the vents to investigate. You will die in this game, that much is inevitable, but how much you die is entirely dependent on how quiet you are and how well you can use your gadgets to take advantage of the often short-lived opportunities. Violence is the only factor of any significance, and while it can seem gruesome at times, it is heavily mitigated by a few key factors. This game is not a shooter, it is a survival experience. Almost every mechanic is designed to prevent the player from openly engaging in combat with any enemy. Violence is unavoidable at times, but engaging in violence with enemies of any type requires resources, and resources are all extremely limited. Every time the player throws a Molotov cocktail or shoots a gun has to be carefully planned and executed because you don't get many chances. And even when you do get a chance, making any sort of noise can draw the alien out, which can quickly turn very poorly for the player. Violence against humans in this game is rare, since other humans were not particularly common. The player can shoot other humans, which will cause a small amount of blood, but the noise draws the alien out. The game includes an achievement for completing the entire campaign without killing any people, so that's what I ended up doing in my playthrough, and I expect most players to attempt the same. But that doesn't mean the player will never see violence against humans. The alien has a nasty habit of killing any humans it comes across, since the other human characters tend to create a ridiculous amount of noise. The violence will cause some visible blood on the human's dead bodies, but almost no visible blood during the actual act, and no gore at all. The androids are a slightly different animal. While the player can occasionally see gore on human bodies in the environment, androids are much more likely to be seen torn apart. This is mitigated by the fact that they are so obviously different than their human counterparts. Androids bleed a milky white sort of blood that is clearly visible when they're injured. The player can never dismember an android or perform any other significantly violent act like that, but the androids can be lit on fire or shot multiple times without any noticeable reaction. They will literally walk straight towards you while on fire, continuing on with their murderous programming. The alien is the only character that the player can but likely will not injure. The player can shoot the alien, but I guarantee you that any player that tries this will end up dead in a very short time. The only thing that can injure the alien is fire, and towards the end of the game, the use of flamethrowers and molotovs to deter the alien is vital. The alien will be briefly engulfed in flames, but will quickly escape to a nearby vent. This only injures the alien for a very brief period, and does not leave any visible wounds. There are a number of different animations for when the alien kills the player, but only one of these involved any blood or gore at all. Most simply involve the alien grabbing the player, and then once the player has enough time to realize what had happened, the screen goes black. There is only one exception. The alien can use its tail to impale the player through the back. It is very likely that the player will never see this death animation in first person, but there is one unavoidable cutscene where the alien performs it on another character. This cutscene and the similar death animation are the only examples of violence that result in gore in the entire game. No! 
There are human bodies that show signs of violence, but these aren't seen with any real frequency until closer to the end of the game. Some of these bodies may have holes through their chest, either caused by the impaling of the tail like what I showed before, or by the classic alien chest burster. However, the player only sees the aftermath. The violence that caused these actions is never shown. The content in this video is without a doubt dark and gruesome, but it is heavily outweighed by the amount of time the player will spend doing exactly what you're seeing now. Every 10-15 to 15 second combat encounter in this game is punctuated by hours and hours of slow, careful, tense, but uneventful sneaking and hiding. Every mechanic of this game pushes the player to be as conservative with ammunition and gadgets as possible, avoiding combat until it's inevitable. It is entirely possible, if not likely, that most of the images I've shown in this video will be missed by a sizable portion of the game's audience. The more important factor in deciding whether or not this game is an appropriate game for your child is whether or not they can handle suspense and fear. This game is designed to be scary. Maybe not in the same way as a cheap slasher movie, but certainly in the same vein as the first Alien movie. If they can't handle that, they likely won't be able to handle this. However, since that does not directly impact on the mature content in this game, we gave this game a recommended age of 14 years old. For the full written review, including the extra categories, log on to SideStoryGames.com.